SpaceX places the first orbital super heavy booster on the launch pad, super secret payloads get exposed, Starlink's turf war continues, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin and this is SpaceX in the News. Road closures were canceled for Tuesday and Wednesday this week. However, that didn't prevent SpaceX from purging pipes at the launch site in anticipation for Booster 7 static fires. Said launch vehicle was moved out of the Mega Bay and transported down Highway 4 to the orbital launch pad on Thursday, where it was promptly greeted with open arms by the orbital launch tower. And just before midnight last night, for the very first time, a booster was lifted onto the launch table using the tower instead of a crane. Static fires using its 33 Raptor 2 engines are expected to commence as early as next week. Keep an eye on Lab Padre's channel if you wish to catch him live. The Edom and B7.1 test tanks have not yet been tested either, but the latter has been fully hooked into the can crusher cap. The crew of Players Don are progressing through their training. They have begun their first week training on Dragon to learn its systems. The two SpaceX employees on the team also shared highlights from their medical training with the University of Texas Health Center at Houston which included some time in the hyperbaric chamber to expose the two astronauts to low oxygen and high carbon dioxide environments. In other Falcon news, as mentioned in our previous episode, it appears likely SpaceX did in fact host secret payloads aboard their latest Falcon 9 mission for Global Star. Some astute stargazers detected four clandestine spacecraft in orbit the day after the mission. They are soon to be modified Starlink satellites, possibly for the National Reconnaissance Office. This is in addition to the four previous secret Starlink sats alleged to have flown on Transporter 3. In a letter to the Federal Communications Commission, dated June 13th, SpaceX and OneWeb requested the agency disregard their previous filings concerning several years worth of disagreements with spectrum coordination and low Earth orbit. It seems that OneWeb's new need for a ride to space on Falcon, given recent unavailable rides on Soyuz, has brought the two competing companies together as frenemies. Then on Tuesday, SpaceX sent another letter to the FCC calling for the agency to address DISH network and RS access use of the 12 gigahertz band and OneWeb, as well as several other satellite internet companies, back them up on the issue. That frequency range is used to support both ground and satellite-based broadband communication services. However, the contention lies with the potential 5G interference. SpaceX filed its analysis this week, claiming the DISH and RS access studies previously sent to the FCC are intentionally misleading. And according to their own conducted tests, terrestrial 5G usage of the 12 gigahertz band would lead to outages for the majority of Starlink users. In the letter, SpaceX Senior Director of Satellite Policy, David Goldman wrote, leaving the proceeding open any longer simply cannot be justified for policy or technical reasons. Over the six years, the commission has let the proceedings fester. Satellite operators have been forced to spend countless hours of engineering time responding to frivolous arguments by DISH and RS access. Elon following up on Twitter that their attempt to bait and switch satellite spectrum for cellular spectrum is super shady and unethical. If they are successful, it would hurt the least served and completely unserved of the world. Very messed up. Now it's time for today's Honorable Mention. On June 20th, NASA conducted their fourth wet dress rehearsal of the SLS rocket to launch Artemis 1. The test experienced five hours of delays due to several technical issues, including a liquid hydrogen leak with a quick disconnect bleed line. That would normally scrub a launch, but since this is a test, NASA was looking to acquire as much data as possible. So they proceeded with a modified count despite their failed attempts to fix the leak. While hoping to make it to the T-9 second mark, which is the moment the four RS-25 engines would ignite given a real launch, the test only made it to T-29 seconds before the onboard automated computer aborted after sensing the hydrogen leak, which was expected. During the debrief the following day, NASA told reporters it was a very successful rehearsal because they accomplished more objectives that were not completed in prior WDRs, but said they would need a couple more days to determine whether a fifth test will need to be conducted before moving on to final preparations for launch. That determination could be announced today. Liftoff is currently slated for no earlier than August. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for stopping by. Shout out to my locals members back in the channel. Link below for those of you who wish to do the same. It is appreciated. But regardless, have a nominal weekend. And until next time, Godspeed.